Politics is the hottest ticket in town tonight. Congressman Kaufman holds his long-awaited town hall with limited seating and strict rules. We'll listen in live. Seeking a higher power inside Denver's International Church of Cannabis, a 95-year-old vet talks about coming face-to-face -face with his past and a 100-year-old who's part of Denver's workforce of the present. And shame on us for shaming the people who become accidentally famous. Next. Tonight, a fairly well-known local man wearing a suit jacket will receive scathing feedback that he's a worthless waste of space who doesn't do a good job and should be fired. His name is Congressman Mike Kaufman. Who do you think I was talking about? Kaufman's holding his town hall in Aurora that his critics have been clamoring for for some time, but with very strict rules, trying to avoid the shouting match debacles that other Republicans in Congress have faced. This is a live look at the hall at the CU Anschutz campus, where we're expecting the congressman any moment now. In order to get in, constituents need to sign up in advance. They had to show photo ID at the door. They only get to ask a question of the congressman if selected through a raffle during the hour-long town hall. And protest signs can be no larger than this, this one, which bears my favorite all-time protest slogan, down with this sort of thing. We hope at some point in this uh, next half hour to be able to listen in as the congressman begins to engage with some of his constituents. There was a long line out the door. We know that there will be protesters outside as well. There is a heavy police presence, and there's a mysterious second chair on stage, someone other than Congressman Kaufman, who will be there hearing from voters tonight. I see a thumbs up, thumbs down sign right there in the middle, which is of the appropriate size, so someone came prepared. Congressman Kaufman will be joining me here on Next Tomorrow to discuss the highlights and the lowlights of this long-awaited town hall. His newly announced Democratic challenger, Jason Crow, backed out of an interview here yesterday. We're hoping to have him on in the future. New tenants moved into the church 10 months ago, but no one really seemed to notice. Not until they started restoring that old church at the corner of Logan and Dakota in Denver. The inside? It's a real trip now. Our Noel Brennan got the tour. This is a very quiet neighborhood, a lot of families around here, school a couple blocks away. For more than a century, it blended in until color bled from walls of the 113-year-old church. Uh, it looks like, a, like an old church that had some stuff painted on the outside, <laughs> to be quite honest. Neighbors noticed the new paint on the outside and in. Very visceral experience to walk into a 113-year-old church and see this much color. We have two of the most famous artists in the world who have contributed murals to the space. No longer a traditional church. You know, we're much more of a colorful crew here. Unless you're one to worship with weed. We are currently in the uh, International Church of Cannabis in Denver, Colorado. New tenants started a nonprofit and brought a new religion they call Elevationism. Elevationists believe that uh, one can find the path to spiritual fulfillment through the ritual use of cannabis. Steve Burke's family bought the church and he's the landlord. We're super proud to have restored it and bring it back to the community in a new way. A new way neighbors haven't seen before. I hope they pay taxes. <laughs> Neither has the city. I don't know what to make of it quite yet. You know, I, I, have, I, I share my constituents' concerns and that I want to make sure that we have safe and vibrant neighborhoods and that we have people playing by the rules. This is not just a bunch of lazy stoners getting together to get high. We really want to positively impact the Washington Park West neighborhood. We want to do great things for the community. These colorful doors open to a congregation on 420. I hope they're respectful of folks who have lived 50 years on this block. For next. Now don't be scared of the unknown. Come and meet us. I'm Noel Brennan. On 420, the church is planning to host academic panels and to bring in guest speakers. They've also booked musicians and comedians. So, you know, just typical church stuff. Next question, why do phone books still exist and how do I get them off my porch? A phone book publishers group says 50% of Americans still use phone books. <clears throat> All right, but let's assume that that stat is correct, 50%. So that means that half the population gets a six pound bound pile of paper plopped on their porch each year against their will. There's a website where you can opt out of phone book deliveries, yellowpagesoptout.com. But before you opt out, what about donating your phone book? It can be soothing, therapeutic even, to rip it apart page by page. And our photojournalist Corky Scholl turned his lens on Judy's house in Denver, 
where grieving kids and families are soothed each day. It was funny, I was taking my dog for a walk this morning and I just saw every phone book on people's doorsteps and I just thought to myself, people may not know that there's another way to, to use something like this. At Judy's house, we have actually a wonderful use for a phone book. We use them as a coping skill or coping tool with our kids. How we do that is when kids are experiencing big emotions, we encourage them to use a phone book and tear up pages of a phone book to get out those big emotions. So we'll hand out chunks of pages to kids and we say we're going to have a phone book tear to rip up um, kind of some of those emotions that are going on inside of you. So go ahead and start ripping up the pages, crumple them up, stomp on them. When we bring in the phone books, we end up explaining what a phone book is because many of these kids have often never really seen a phone book before or if they have, they don't really know what the use of it is. So we end up kind of giving a lesson on, on what phone books are and, and what they were to us when we were growing up. Judy's House welcomes donations of phone books. You can drop them in the bin inside their front door. They're open 9 to 4 Monday through Friday. They're at 18th and Gaylord, right next to City Park. Bill King, up in Estes Park, is a World War II veteran who loves telling stories about his days in the Navy. He recently had the chance to travel to New Orleans with his whole family to see PT Boat 305 launch for the first time since the war. And our Cody Broadway got a chance to chat with Bill about his trip. Take a look through the photos and videos that his family shared. Hello. Hey, Bill. Uh, this is Cody with Nine News. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. When as far as I can see at this age. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Tell me about your trip. Well, it was really a nice surprise because I, I heard about it kind of late and I told my daughter that I says, I'm going. And so I says, and you're going too because I'll need a, a, somebody to guide a guardian. It's amazing how, how we lived, though. Of course, when you're young at 20 years old and 19, why, I guess you can get along with about most anything. And we did. What was your family's reaction to seeing the boat? Oh, they were they were thrilled. They they never thought in a lifetime that they, they would ever see it. And I was very happy to. I was glad to take them. Would you do it all over again? Definitely, definitely. I sure would at age 20. And uh, and then, like I say, it was it was a thrill to be able to do it for this for our country. So. Parts of Bill's actual PT boat that he served on were used to restore the one that he stepped onto in New Orleans, which is now open to the public. That United passenger who got manhandled down the aisle for refusing to be bumped from his seat is the latest American to be publicly humiliated for his past after getting accidentally famous. Dr. David Dow had been in some legal trouble years ago, which of course has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that Chicago Aviation Police dragged him around like a rag doll. Think back to the telegenic guy from the Oscars tour group who were sur uh, surprised live on air, and then it happened to come out that he had just gotten out of prison. Or Ken Bone, the red-vested voter at the presidential debate whose questionable online activities were made public after his question to the presidential candidates had made him a TV star. You know what? Shame on us in the media for shaming people who have done nothing wrong but accidentally become famous in our society, which is looking to make a new star every day. It's our favorite question, and we haven't asked it all week. Is the train to the plane working today? Do what you're passionate about and don't let anyone tell you that you should stop. Not even if you're 100, like our newest friend on Next, who we caught up with at work today. And they cracked a safe filled with Colorado history. Next. A beautiful spring day in Colorado. I'm meteorologist Kathy Sabin. Things are definitely starting to green up around the area. The wind will be a feature for us, but southwest winds will push temperatures even warmer tomorrow. Our high at 74, way above the average of 60. Tomorrow will be close to 80. That is unusually warm for this time of year. And the heat, the moisture triggering isolated thunderstorms in southeastern Colorado. Severe weather down in New Mexico and central Texas. So finally starting to be that time of year where we're looking at the radar for wind and hail. 
and rain. We're kind of sandwiched in between two storm systems here, so another mild dry day coming up tomorrow. System to our west will be here over the weekend, offering the chance for a shower on Easter Sunday. There'll be some clouds around for sunrise services Sunday morning, but temperatures will be about 10 degrees warmer than average for the weekend. Not bad tonight, 43 degrees with fair skies, sunshine tomorrow. Winds will kick up a bit, getting us close to 80 in the afternoon. As we move toward the weekend, a little bit of a cool down with a dry front on Saturday. Easter Sunday, 70 degrees. Isolated showers for Sunday and for Monday and Tuesday of next week as well. And this is a glacier lily up in Steamboat Springs. So beautiful. Kathy, thanks. Retirement is not mandatory. That's what our Ann Herps heard today from Denver Public Schools' oldest employee still coming to work at age 100. Are we equal to zero? They say never stop learning. What are the factors in this one? They tell you it'll keep you young. Rally Ginsburg says it's true. She should know. She's 100 years old. You have to keep reminding me, yes. And still going to school. Okay. Thank you, love. Rally works in the gifted and talented department of Denver Public Schools. You want me to start doing this now? I alphabetize, I sort, I shred, I... Whatever they give me to do, I do it. And she collects a paycheck for the four hours she puts in every Wednesday. <laughs> You're too fast, Rally. Yeah, I work myself out of a job. That's what they tell me. But she's not planning on retiring after 48 years with DPS. Because I don't want to. So don't even ask. I don't have to do anything that I don't want to, but I want to come to work. And she cares about the kids, too. And she knows that by helping us get our work done, She's helping the students and the teachers. That's not the only thing that keeps her going. A nice, just a good nice novel. Except the books these days are disgusting. It makes you wonder about the authors because they're full of sex. Either they're getting too much or not enough. And so they have to write about it, I guess. Rally's teaching her coworkers about humor and aging well. If we can stay focused on what we love, then that's the secret. Do what you're passionate about and don't let anyone tell you that you should stop. A lesson only learned through experience. As long as they let me, I'll come back. <laughs> or next. Done. This is Ann Herbst. Rally take the summer off with the students. Promises to be back for the next school year and no more smutty books. The best sport coat ever worn on this program belongs to our next guest who leads a political party with popular ideas and virtually no popular support. We check on our old friend, the A-Line, and the safe is cracked and photos of a serial killer fall out. Next. Into streams and as Looking into the Congressman the Mike Kaufman town hall, his first of the year in Aurora right now as he's being questioned by a constituent. Uh, some pointed questioning clearly. This is streaming on the next Facebook page. If you were interested in taking a listen in, this is an hour long town hall. A lot of love for that question. Uh, and we'll have full reports, obviously, throughout the evening and on 9news.com as well. An old black safe has sat near the front door of the Glenwood Springs Post Independent for years. No one apparently gave it much thought until a locksmith named Wayne Winton said, beat that crack for free. Even Wayne didn't expect to find too much inside. But hidden away inside that old safe were photos of an infamous serial killer. And then I pulled out the one drawer and started looking at it, and it's like, oh, my gosh, there's a, there are pictures of Ted Bundy. Um, and we didn't have full-size prints. They were only the contact sheets, but he's really recognizable, probably the nation's most famous serial killer. Um, so then we were kind of amused that they were mixed in with photos of a New Year's baby and just the ordinary events that happen around here. The photos were from 1977. Ted Bundy was set to go on trial for murder when he leapt out of a second story window and escaped the Pitkin County Courthouse. All of Aspen was in a panic. He was recaptured six days later, wandering around in the mountains. The newspaper says it actually had lost a lot of photos from this era when it changed buildings, so good thing a few of these were held safe all along. Wayne the locksmith, by the way, got a $20 bill found inside the safe for his efforts. There's a second safe inside the newspaper's building and they're trying to get permission from the landlord to crack that one open as well. The A-Line train celebrates a birthday next week, and you know we love to celebrate this thing. Let's celebrate whether or not it's working today. Yes, something to celebrate. 
Train into the plane is staying on schedule as it approaches its one year mark, April 22nd, still on double secret probation from federal regulators. We love your A line updates that you keep sending. Doris and Alan were on their way home from a vacation last night, stopped to check out the train for us. They say it was on time. Thank you, Doris. Thank you, Alan. Keep the reports coming. One in 100 Colorado voters is a registered libertarian. One in 100. Many more people identify with libertarian philosophy, but that hasn't translated into successful candidates at the national, statewide, or even local level, really. And that's where I began a conversation with the newly elected chairman of Colorado's Libertarian Party. He's a realtor from Castle Rock, Wayne Harlos. It seems to me, anecdotally, that libertarian ideals have never been more popular. So why do you suppose it's so unpopular to vote libertarian? Well, there's a couple reasons. Um, the ideas are popular, but there is the wasted third vote syndrome that is really raising its head within the Libertarian Party. The Green Party is experiencing that as well. Uh, but because of the two-party system, and, and people are inclined to vote again, especially in our last election, vote against somebody rather than for somebody. For folks who are, are not up to speed totally on politics, probably the easiest way to describe libertarianism is fiscally conservative, socially progressive. Pretty pr vaguely fair. I would not certainly not progressive, socially okay. tolerant. What's the difference? Well, the progressives would have you believe that we have to fund a lot of government social programs through taxpayer um, forfeiture, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, the libertarians believe in the social rights and social opportunities for people, but they don't believe in the government funding of those programs. What's success for you in the next couple of years? Well, it's getting our word out. Uh, as vice chair last year of the party, and then before I uh, joined the officers, uh, I was very involved in outreach booths. We have a booth set up at the People's Fair, or at Pride Fest, or at a gun show. And we'd be talking to people about the Libertarian Party, and I would say probably 60% of the people would say, yeah, I agree with everything you guys are saying with a couple very small uh, caveats. So they we had a lot of people join the Libertarian Party and are now dues-paying members of the Libertarian Party because they finally understood what the Libertarian Party is all about. The problem is obvious to me that we haven't been getting the word out in a very effective manner. I, I think when you said that you have booths at the gun show and Pride Fest, that might be the best definition of libertarianism that I have ever heard. Very much so. By conversation with Libertarian Chairman Wayne Harlos. Next is building an army of dancing babies that will not be stopped. Plus your feedback, next. So it would seem that people are split 50-50 on our next theme music. All adults hate it, and all kids love it. The latest is Nico. Nico's mom, Heather, says Nico loves him some next. So Nico, you're joining our army of dancing babies. You know a child that cannot help but shake it. When the next theme music comes on, they can be added to our army of dancing babies. Your feedback brings us home, as always. Christy Manzanares writes, thanks for the piece on phone books and donating them to Judy's house. What awesome use of ancient technology. There's going to be some people who don't like that word ancient, but it's a great cause nonetheless. And Mary Celeste says, Kyle, where on God's green earth did you get that jacket? They, they sell this. No, no, no. They absolutely sell this. Listen, if you don't like it, launch a protest. I'll see you next time.